Hi guys and welcome back to World of Tanks and it's a very spooky World of Tanks. Yes, the monsters are among us and we've got this lovely, fancy, spooky new Halloween garage as well which looks actually quite nice and uh, yeah, I quite like it. We've got that probably for the next month I would assume. So yeah, four monster tanks. We have the Lycan T71. We have Revenant Crafts Panther which is also from the Rollout comic book. We have, and part of my uh, pronunciations on these two, the Gorinich KV-5, uh, which is basically a three-headed dragon. And we have the Kaiju OI for the Japanese, the first of the Japanese Super Heavies. But today we're going to be looking at the Revenant Crafts Panther. And I quite like this thing. I like the look of it. I like the Zimmerit coating, which is... Uh, that ridged coating that you find on it. I didn't know what it was, I had to look it up and according to Google it was a, a sort of paste-like substance that was put onto the uh, steel of the German tanks, actually done in the factory. It was ridged to increase thickness without actually uh, increasing weight too much and they dried it on and the purpose of it was to stop magnetic anti-tank mines sticking to the tank. They provided enough distance between the metal and the magnet to actually stop it sticking and that's why they put this on and it was put on some of the uh, the later World War II German tanks and I like it I want this as an option on all my German tanks in this game so if you're listening wargaming please give us that option so anyway what's a revenant some of you may be asking some of you might not be sure well according to Google again the source of all my knowledge um, it is a spirit ghost or sort of body that has returned from the dead to terrorize the living so there you go and it's a bit of a mix of a stock panther uh, with the fully upgraded Comedy L100 gun. So we'll have a look at some of the basic stats first. Well, it's got the same body uh, as the standard panther. So you're looking at 85 on the front, uh, 50 on the sides and 40 on the rear. And it's the stock turret of the panther. So you're looking at 100 on the front, 45 on the sides and rear and like I say it's got the Comedy L100 but it's not quite a stock panther. A stock panther has a 650 horsepower engine and if we look into this one it has a 700 horsepower engine so it's a little bit more sluggish on the uptake than the standard panther but not by much really uh, in my opinion. So Gun handling is more or less the same, although the Panther has 2.3 second aiming time and 0.32 accuracy, this has 2.5. Sorry, did I say that right? Yeah, 2.3 and yeah, 2.5. Uh, seven and a half rounds a minute, 198 pen, 135 damage, 244 on your premium rounds, 38 on your high explosive with 175 damage. Now it does have a slightly increased traverse speed, so I decided to buy a normal Panther to compare it to. Normal Panther gets 28 on the hull, 26 on the turret and a 380 view range. Now this one gets 30 on the hull, which kind of makes up for the lack of engine power, but quite a bit more on the turret traverse, 38 degrees, but it does lose 20 meters on the view range. But the 30 degrees is actually slightly slower than the stock turret on the Panther. So yeah, it's a bit of a mixed bag, but it's not as sluggish as I thought it would be. Uh, it's actually got an increased top speed, if we have a look, of 55 kilometers an hour over the Panther's 48. Uh, same reverse speed of 20 kilometers an hour. Now it gets a power to weight ratio of 16.46, whereas the normal Panther, if we have a look, is 19.61 so it is a little bit like I say a little bit more sluggish on the uptake you notice it more on the hills but it can really shift when it gets going with that extra top speed but let's have a quick look at the modules on it uh, so you can see where they are if you want to take one of these out I mean the front can bounce a few shots I was bouncing them from a T20 early with a 76 mil gun uh, but other than that you've got to be careful uh, this is more of a, a support sniping tank in my opinion just like the standard Panther Panther 2 Panther 88 but anyway, big old engine block at the back. And gun goes quite far back into the turret actually, so you hit it anywhere in the turret and there's a good chance you can damage the gun. Obviously the tracks, turret on top. Radio is, oh, just in that front corner there, nearly missed it. Ammunition, quite a bit of ammunition in the sides. So on the right hand side of the tank, more or less under the turret from the front and in the middle. And on the left hand side of the tank, 
yeah, all the way from the front to almost the back of the turret are ammo racks, and just down each side under where the gun shield would be as well. So if you wanted to take it out uh, by ammo racking or damage the ammo rack, that's where you want to be hitting it. Crew members, two in the front, one either side, and then in the turret you've got the three bunched together sort of in the middle. So if you don't need the gun, there's a good chance you're going to actually take out one of the crew members as well. So, armour-wise, I've given you the basic numbers, but again, never really tell the whole story. So, you've got 1 to 20 mil, which is basically the whole top of the tank, and the top of the turret as well, and the top of that commander's hatch. You've got the 21 to 30 mils, which is a thin strip just above the uh, the gun mantle there, and also, obviously, the tracks, which act as uh, a certain amount of space armour like they do on all the vehicles. Your 50 mil all the way down the sides of the hull and those uh, sort of shoulders if you will jutting out over the tracks it's pretty much solid all the way around same thickness and well it's 45 all the way around the sides and the back of the turret as well and then we've got the 85 on the upper plate and again you can accentuate that angle slightly um, but you don't really have a great deal of good depression in the Panther um, it's not too bad don't get me wrong it's it's not bad at all really uh, it's a little bit un-German and you actually get more over the side of your tank as well and then you've got quite a good gun mantle on this which can be quite bouncy I've found you know it's not something that you want to rely on but it has bounced a few shots for me and it's uh, quite pleasant and surprising when it does happen but like in most of these uh, sort of support mediums your best bet is just trying not to get hit in the first place um, you know once you start taking a few hits in this it's not going to be long before you're well before you're done and you're back to the grave so uh, yeah there's not really much more to talk about it is um, well it's, it's a panther it's not like some of the other tanks you know that are really quite different to uh, to how they are you know anything else in the tech tree but it does look absolutely fantastic I, I really do like the look of this these uh, these comic book tanks that have been bringing into it are looking very nice um, this snake bite is a really nice looking tank I just like the touches of the foliage sort of all over the front of it uh, little patches of grass on the back as well and all over the gun um, but yeah I think that's about it really so uh, let's get into a bit of gameplay and see how it actually handles and plays out Right, so here we are in the first of the replays tonight, and this is actually one of the last games that I played in it, and uh, I've put them sort of slightly out of order. Um, and as always, I've forgotten to mention things in the garage. Uh, one, I did ask you guys which one you like to see first, and the Panther got the most requests, so that's why this one's up first. Tomorrow will be the Gory Niche KV5. Uh, I also forgot to mention the Silver bonus and the XP bonus, which is 56% for Silver, and 20% for XP, so it's not a bad little silver in of this at all, actually, it's quite nice. Um, equipment, uh, I've got the equipment that I got with it, which is gun rammer, vents, and gun laying drive. Now, there is an argument for possibly taking off uh, the vents or the gun rammer and replacing them with some form of optics, particularly because you've got a slightly lower view range than the standard Panther with this one. And the other one is that if you buy this, uh, just like with the snake bite, you've got the snake bite skill, uh, you also get a skill with this, and it's to do with rationing. I can't remember what it's called, but basically there is a, a chance that at the end of a match you will actually save one of the consumables that you've used during that match. Um, I don't know what that percentage is. Uh, it doesn't actually say on the skill or anything like that, so I'm not entirely sure. I don't think I've had it happen to me yet, but then again, I'm not entirely sure. I don't know if it'll come up and say, you know, in the battle results screen whether you've saved anything or whether you've just got to sort of try and figure it out yourself. But there you go, there is that chance. Um, and obviously the, uh, the the fact that Revenant, uh, it's supposed to be a corpse or a, a spirit returned from the grave, does explain why this thing looks so beat up. Um, you know, it's covered in uh, dints from heavy caliber machine gun fire and uh, yeah there's a couple of holes in it as well which do produce smoke more often than not when you sat still but all in all like I say I really do like this thing so Pacific Island encounter uh, it's a tier 7 match which is quite nice I've been in quite a few tier 7 matches in this today uh, I've been in a couple of tier 9 as well and I think one of the replays I've got is actually a tier 8 match but it does you know it doesn't get any premium matchmaking it does play up to tier 9 just like a standard panther would. In fact, 
none of these four tanks get premium matchmaking they all see the tiers that they normally should so the OI which is tier 6 sees tier 8 this sees tier 9 the Lycan being a light tank sees tier 10 uh, as does the KB5 I right, managed to put a couple of shots on that VK uh, I am aware that I'm on my own round here which is why I'm being quite cautious and trying to sneak around. Now I saw him pop down and I was expecting him to come around this way so that's why I just waited a minute to drop off radar and then came around here myself. I don't fancy getting surprised. And like I say, I mean I, I, I prefer to use this tank as a support but on a map like Pacific Island you know it's not a particularly big map. And in fact I took a hit from that 3002 but I managed to finish him off without taking any more. Um, yeah, it's not a particularly big map, so sometimes you just have to get in there. The Death Toaster coming over the hill. I managed to put one into him, but he does get a hit in return. Put one more in, and then somebody else finishes him off. And I get a bit of spotting damage for that. But I am aware that artillery is in the match. So I want to keep moving, try and keep a bit random. That's a very dodgy shot on that T25-2. No, I wasn't expecting that to hit, but it was worth a go. Um, but yeah, I mean, really, with this, like I say, it's if you've played the Panther, you'll be able to get in this and, and just play it. Um, like I say, it, it's just the standard L100, uh, the long 75 off the standard Panther, just with uh, 0.2 second longer aiming time. But apart from that, same rate of fire and same accuracy. Um, same damage and, you know, penetration. So that's pretty standard. Standard hull, uh, like I say, it has got slightly increased uh, hull traverse, which I think would make up for the uh, decrease in engine power. Uh, but it has got a much greater turret traverse, which I have actually found quite useful. Um, and it's helped me out in a couple of matches, to be honest. Take a bounce from that death toaster, and auto aim does not like me. It just dunked it into the ground. So I'll get a bit closer. Take another bounce from him. He can't be fully upgraded. Fully upgraded, it has a long 88 with I think 203 mil of penetration, so he wouldn't have any problem. So I'm going to go around, auto aim again, dunked into the floor, and this is where I get frustrated. I'm just going for the ram. But I reload in time, so I'll just put one into him. Now, time to deal with artillery. And it's at this point that I kind of realised that we'd, well, wiped out everybody apart from artillery. And that was a very close one. But I, I do like this tank. Um, the Panther was another tank, uh, like the Tiger, for me, that when I started playing this game, I stopped playing it in, in March. Uh, like I said, I think it only came out on PlayStation in January. Um... I wanted a Panther, I wanted a Tiger because of their sort of prowess in history. And I was very disappointed with the Tiger, and I was quite disappointed. Well, not disappointed with the Panther, I was frustrated. Um, I found I had more fun in the 3002M at Tier 6, which is basically the Panther prototype, than I did in the Panther. And I just found it quite a frustrating tank. But then again, I didn't know how to play it back then. Now I do know how to play it in a support role, or when you're top tier against a lot of lower tier stuff, you can be a bit more aggressive, especially with that faster turret traverse on this one. Um, but you just don't want to get too carried away. But anyway, I came out of that with a, uh, a second class mastery, 1600 damage done, which isn't brilliant, but it's not too bad, and it was enough to get me the top slot on the team. But I've had uh, I've had better games in it than that. But it it was just a nice, fun game, and it it does show you one side of it. Like I say, the fact that you can be a little bit more aggressive when you are top tier, and there's a lot of lower tiers in there. And I, I mean, I tore that T29 apart, just putting hit after hit into him, because the rate of fire is is quite nice on it. Anyway, got the second one for you now, and it's Sand River Standard Battle, and this is tier eight match. So I am not top tier in this. And again, you know, it's uh, not a stunning match. I do quite a respectable amount of damage for a, you know, for a tear down in a match. Um, nothing to shout home about really, but it's uh, it's a decent match. And it's at the risk of giving away a spoiler, it's enough to get me the top slot again. So I was quite happy. Now, I'm looking behind. I've got a Kaiju in here as well. And do you know, I've been having a lot of fun in the Kaiju. 
Uh, I've not been in a match yet where I haven't been top tier. I've been very, very lucky because it can play up to tier 8. And uh, I've always been top tier in it. And when you're top tier, that thing is an absolute monster, literally. Um, but anyway, we'll talk about that one on Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. I'll do the like and last, I think. So, I have got a little bit of company coming over this way with me. But I'd rather not be first. Um, like I say, tier 8 match, I would rather stay back a bit and provide support fire. You know, sniping across. Try and stay out of the enemy's spotting range and use my teammates and, like I say, lay down supporting fire. And I think in, uh, in tier 8 and 9 matches, that's how you've got to use this tank. You've got to stay back a bit, you know, not camping at the back, but, you know, you've got to be that second line, use the spotting range of your allies, of your higher tier tanks to get in there, and you basically just whittle things down, because, I mean, you only do 135 damage per per shot with this, which is, I don't want to say it's on the low side for a tier 7, I mean, this is a tier 7 tank and not a tier 8, but it, it's not the highest, I mean, some of the, the Russian and the Chinese have got quite a bit of damage behind them. Uh, but they've not got the rate of fire of this, so you basically just whittle things down from a distance when you're bottom tier. And it does work quite well, I mean 198 mm pen is definitely nothing to, uh, you know, to look down upon, it's quite a decent pen. And uh, the pen on your premium ammunition really comes in in those uh, tier 9 matches, especially when you can't outflank, there's no option for it. But it, it's accurate as well, and that's what I like about it. You can aim for those weak spots uh, a lot better because of the uh, good accuracy. Right, the M6 is done for. See, I took a hit from, I think it was the Churchill, but I don't know what happened to it. It got eaten up in something. Those sort of broken side skirts on the side of the tank seem to be purely cosmetic. They didn't show up in the armour viewer. And again, if you're careful, you can side scrape against uh, same tier vehicles in this. And that was a bit lazy of me with that Tiger 2. I was a bit far back and I took a hit because of it. Didn't manage to penetrate the front of that church, although. And this is where I break contact. I'm going to move up onto the hill and see if I can put flanking shots in instead. Because again, I was painfully aware of being quite out on a limb there on my own. So I do have to be quite careful. And I'm, I mean, I must admit, I'm lucky in this match that the enemy team haven't made a big push over this north, uh, northeastern corner. Because more often than not, you'll get a good third of the team up here. But now I can put shots into the side of that Tiger 2. He knows that I'm over here somewhere. And there he's spotted me. Now I've left the crew in this. All these monster tanks seem to come with named crew. They all come with the same crew rather than just a random named one. Um, I think it was on the World of Tanks website. It actually gives you the crew names on there. Now something I've not looked into and I will try to look into tomorrow is whether those names mean anything. Obviously, you know, with the, the Revenant Panther it's the name of the crew from the comic book. Um, but with the Lycan and the uh, Kaiju and obviously the uh, Corin each, whether they mean anything or not, I'll, I'll have a look, see if I can find out in tomorrow's video. Now, managed to take out the Tiger 2, come round on this Churchill, but he is giving me a bit of a problem and it's my positioning. So I'm going to try and reposition to get a better shot at him. He gets another one into that cup holder on top, which is quite sizable really. But then he gets taken out. But there's a T-34 camping the ridge by the enemy base. Of course, where else is the T-34 going to be? Top tier heavy with a damn good turret and a very powerful gun. He's going to be at the back, camping the base. <laughs> yeah, of course he's not going to be any use anywhere else. But never mind. He's my problem now. So, keep putting the shots in. I managed to hit his ammo rack, but... It wasn't going to ammo rack him from that, well, with this uh, 135 damage. But that's what I mean, you need to just chip away at that health. I was out of his view range. 
And I think this is where I possibly made my mistake. I didn't have high hopes for this match from the beginning because of the, the lack of our team coming this way. Um, but it was turning out okay, but I was getting a bit impatient. And I really thought that T-34 had dropped right back down, but he hadn't. And he starts creeping back up. I was actually going after a tank destroyer then. And I tried to take his tracks off, but I can't. And I put one more in, and I stay a lot longer than I'm actually welcome. Yep, and I take that hit for it. And again, that's my own fault. I stayed there for a lot longer than I should have done. But I'm not doing bad. Like I say, it's, you know, I'm not top tier. I'm not exactly bottom tier either. But I'm doing alright so far. Until, in a moment, I have a sudden rush of shit to the brains. See if now remember what I said about, yeah, I've kept the crews in it. And you might be wondering why I'm not moving. And I'm now dead because of it. And it's because I completely forgot I don't have sixth sense on the crew. Yeah, that's what I mean by sudden rush of shit to the brain. So anyway, we'll skip to the end and see how I actually did. And unfortunately it was a defeat, but I did just over 2,100 damage. And actually blocked 600, which isn't bad. And I came out of that with a sniper medal and a first class mastery. And top of the board. And also top for damage done uh, for my team as well, which I was quite surprised about and quite pleased with, to be honest. Um, I really didn't think I'd have come top in that match. I didn't feel like I'd done much, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately it was a defeat. And we've got one more coming up for you now, and yeah, there's a little bit more to it, this one. I really enjoyed this match. And this one was actually uh, the third match that I played in this. Um, and it, like I say, I do like it. I, I, I do like this tank. I know how to play the Panther now. Like I say, which I didn't do the first time I unlocked it, and uh, I don't feel frustrated with it like I did then I was expecting a lot more from it I had you know quite high expectations but again it's a bit like with the Tiger you get the Tiger when you're top tier and you're up against mostly things like Shermans and T-34s you know the sort of tier 5 stuff you can really go to town on everything and it really does shine like it would have done because in the war obviously that's what these tanks came up against Shermans and T-34s not the tanks that they more often have not come up against in this game and are obviously balanced against you know their own tiers but I just uh, like I said I just felt that the garage review on this one was a little bit short but then you know I sort of looked back over it gave it a quick listen to realised that I've basically covered everything apart from uh, the stuff that I covered in the first replay like the uh, bonuses and the equipment and uh, that there isn't really, I mean I don't want to make it sound bad or boring or anything like that, but there isn't a great deal to talk about with it, because like I say, it is, you know, it's the, the top gun off the Panther, it's the hull off the Panther, it's the stock turret off the Panther, um, and I've covered the differences, and uh, like I say, I think I covered everything, uh, if I didn't and you feel like I've missed something out, then feel free to leave it in the comments, you know, that's how we get better at these things. Oh, in fact, the last thing I haven't covered, <laughs> I've just thought about it, is uh, concealment. This does have a slightly better camouflage rating than the standard Panther. So that's quite nice. And, and uh, there has been the odd match where I've felt, kind of felt it. I know it's only a tiny amount, but there's been a couple of matches where I've been shooting at stuff and it has not spotted me and I was certain it was about to. And it, it just didn't, so it was quite pleasant. But it is just a nice tank to drive, and it's a nice tank to use. And I am really enjoying it. Alright, that 3001P has been very wary. I don't blame him, he's lost more than half his health. I'd be a bit cautious at that point. I'm just wondering if he's going to pop out. No, I don't think he is, so I'm going to creep around carefully in case he's got any friends sat just on that slope. Nope, there he is. Managed to put a shot in and he bounces in return. 
And that's what I mean about this tank. You don't rely on the armour, but when it does bounce, it's a very pleasant surprise. And that was a poorly aimed one. Tried to go for another one, but I put it straight into his gun mantle and it bounces. He bounces in return, then Artie gets involved. And then a Lux gets involved. So I put one into him and then somebody else finishes him off. And then the Covenanter comes back to have another go. Managed to finish him off. And that's what I mean with the turret traverse. That extra turret traverse is really nice on this tank. Against that Covenanter there I would have had to uh, traverse the hull as well as the turret to get it round on it as quick as that. But as you can see it just sort of snapped it round. Boom. Done. But I take a big hit from the story meal and put a little one in return. Now let's see if we can even the odds a little bit and take out one of these before we deal with the other. And the Stura gives me his side, so I'm going for the ammo racks. I don't get them though. Put another one through the front, not quite enough to finish him off. That was a bit of a low roll actually. And the guy next to me manages to get the kill shot. And then I take another hit from Artie. And that nearly finishes me off. But I managed to put one into the 3001P. And he's done for. And yeah. I'm going to let those guys go out first. On 41 health. I'm going to stay. A lot further back than I was before. And that. I don't know if that was aimed at me. But that was damn close. Got 3601 uh, 3601H across there. And I'm far enough away, and with cover from the foliage, that I can shoot at him and he's not going to see me. One of the guys in front of me is spotting him, and I can just keep putting shots in. In fact, I've got to be careful that SE-152, I don't want that to hit anything anywhere near me. <coughs> Excuse me. If he's got that howitzer firing high explosive, just planting a shell near where I am is enough to kill me. Now I'll put another shot in, but he's not there anymore. And again, I'm just feeling a bit like, oh, 41 health. If I get spotted, like I say, they've just got to sneeze at me. I managed to just take out the Yag Panther though. Put a couple of hits in, so did somebody else, but I managed to get the kill shot on him. And yeah, that's when we start getting capped. So, I'll let them make a push on the enemy base. I don't want to head out that way in case there's anything hidden in all that foliage on those hills that can snipe down. So I'm going to come back around this way. You can get a good view over our cap from over this side. And I should be far enough away to not get spotted and again be able to provide supporting fire without getting seen myself. And that's kind of what you have to do in this, although I did have to come up into the middle because nobody else was doing. And if I didn't, then those guys would have been able to make a push straight through and basically be overlooking our base, which wouldn't have been much fun for us. Managed to get a blind fire on that very low health. I think it was Cheeto, was it? Or Chiri? Cheeto? I'm going to creep along here. I don't want to fall off and slide down and hit too hard because that will kill me as well. I've got Tiger P pushing the base now. No, a bit too late on that shot. A Type 64 worrying that tank destroyer down there. And if he's not careful, he'll circle him and take him out. Just checking to see if the Tiger P's popped out again. No, there's a Churchill coming out. And I see the Type 64 again, so let's help out that tank destroyer. And again, managed to just do a bit more damage to him and finish him off and get the kill shot. Now the Churchill's popped out. Now he's obviously behind stuff, so I've got to try and look for a shot. No, a bit too late. Didn't lead it enough, and that one missed. The scores are pretty even. There's me, three tank destroyers against two heavies and medium. And a tank destroyer. Team's not particularly even, but the scores are, are quite even at this point. Well, they're bang even, in fact. And we're being capped again. That'll be that Tiger P. And I actually thought he'd been dealt with. I took my eye off the ball a minute there. 
and thought that he'd been dealt with, but no, he's uh, he's capping our base, and I'm just trying to get to a position where I can see him. And again, it's not a lot, it doesn't sound a lot, but 20 metres can be all the difference. There he is. Now, he's just within my view range, but I don't think it was me that spotted him. I'm pretty sure it was a tank destroyer, and in fact, if he takes a hit from something else and I don't get any assist damage, then yeah, it's definitely not me spotting yeah, somebody else has spotted him. But again, that's what I mean. You just chip away at the health from a distance. With the heavies and things like that. That one went slightly wide. And just bounced off the front of his turret. Now again, this is a bit dangerous. I don't really want to get too close. I don't want to give my position away too much. But he didn't seem to spot me then. And this is where I make a questionable decision, looking back on this. At the time, it kind of seemed like the right thing to do, but looking back, I think this was a bit questionable. I think what I should have done is go back to our cap, sit with those tank destroyers, and let them use their view range to spot while I provide the support in fire again. But I get a little bit brave and a little bit silly, and I think, you know, because I had quite a good match, I was feeling a bit better than I, than I actually am. And uh, even though I realise I'm on low health, I was just thinking, I'm going to try and sneak up on this guy. See if I can spot him from behind for our tank destroyers, obviously around the base, to start putting shots in at him. Now I know he's up here somewhere and hopefully he's not looking this way. And then he pops up. And the first one, because I sort of just locked on and fired. Bounced off his side and he got his gun facing this way. It looked like he was reversing. He kind of knew that I might be sneaking up on him. And at this point I was just thinking, do I turn around and run? I'm not going to make it. He's going to come around anyway. I'm going to get one more hit on him before he finishes me off. And again, that, that was that was my mistake. I can see I made that mistake. And it's one of the things I like about doing these videos, because next time I won't make the same mistake. But came out of that with just over 3,300 damage done, and just under 3,000 uh, XP. Got a high caliber, got my ace tanker on it, and a top gun, and that was on the third game that I played. Um, but yeah, I, it just I don't know, it kind of feels like an easy tank to use, if you see what I mean. I've not actually driven the Panther for quite a few months, but uh, I've got on with this very, very well. And uh, yeah, came top of the table, but unfortunately it was a defeat. And I was going to save this one from a gutted series. Uh, you know, those wins where you do really, really well, but you still lose anyway. Uh, those wins, those games where you do really well, but still lose anyway. But there you go, the Revenant Crafts Panther. Um, I hope I've been uh, informative for you, and I hope it might help you when I've done all four of them. Make your mind up whether you want to shell out for the whole thing. Or whether you just want to earn one. And uh, if you do want to earn one, which one you want to earn. So I'll be back tomorrow. Take care and I'll catch you next time. See you later.